Okay, good evening everyone, and uh, welcome to a very special shir on preparing for Pesach. You know that the Jewish people have a very wonderful tradition, and that is that whatever the holiday is, we must eat. And especially on Pesach, somehow if you listen, if you speak to people from the olden days, the old country, they'll tell you that on Pesach they had a little bit of chicken, a little bit of eggs, maybe a little bit of milk if they were lucky, and matzah, that's about it. Potatoes, there was no, that, that's it. As the time has evolved, so we lost our connection with the inner essence of what Pesach is all about. And we've dedicated ourselves to making sure that we don't miss a skip a meal the entire Yom Tov of Pesach. Eight days of food fest is what Pesach has become. And that's if you don't go to the Pesach hotels. If you go to the Pesach hotels, it's 24-7, 24-8 eating and eating, but to our great credit, everything is mahadrin min ha-mahadrin. You'll have every five hech sherim on every box of matzah, on every bottle of wine, on every new delicious candy treat that has been imported from Switzerland and Eretz Yisrael and Zimbabwe. Everything has the greatest of hech sherim these days. But it has become quite confusing when you go to the store these days, it's not so clear everything you can eat. We have a lot of uh, difficulties discerning between what is for the Ashkenazim, what is for the Sephardi with kidneys, what vegetables need to be checked, how do they need to be checked, which foods are really for gebrachs, not gebrachs. Maybe Rabbi Van will enlighten us with what does it mean if you are gebrachs, if you're not gebrachs, all the different things that are going on. And the Pesach has become... Uh, somewhat stressful and intense in the amount of shopping and the amount of food products and the amount of money that a person is spending to make sure that at every meal there are the newest and the latest trends and fashions and fads in kosher le Pesach food. So, you know, they say behind every world-class caterer is a world-class kashrus uh, uh, advisor and director, and we are very fortunate to have in our midst tonight someone who is literally holding up the kashras of Los Angeles, California. And I believe that the RCC extends far beyond the walls of LA and California itself. And the Rabbi Van is not a stranger to Mokar Chaim, not a stranger to all of you, not a stranger to, to the Jewish people. And he was kind enough in his busy schedule, which I thought I had to drive far to take my kids to school. But we're talking about from Calabasas all the way to this city and all the way back again. His, his daughters, who are my students in Beis Yaakov, they are the legends of Beis Yaakov for having the longest travel time every single day, but they do it with a smile on their face. Where do they get the smile from? Their father and their mother. Really, it's an honor and a pleasure to call up one of my dear friends that I met through the, the rabbinical world, but we become friends beyond that, and that is Rabbi Yaakov Van, director of Kashrus of the RCC, who has taken his precious time to enlighten us in the world of Kashi Sufesa. <laughs> On the way, my daughter calls. Uh, one of my daughters called me, and that was a student by Rabbi Horowitz. So I tell her I can speak for a few minutes. I'm coming to, uh, to speak. Oh, where are you speaking, Abba? I'm speaking uh, by Makar Chaim, by Rabbi Horowitz. You're speaking by Rabbi Horowitz? Oh, Abba, ask him if he could come to speak in Calabasas so they should hear, like, what, what Rabbi Har- you know, what, what a real rabbi sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I tell them, you're good for my, uh, my humility. My children are very good for my humility. <laughs> so it's a great schus uh, to be here, to be with everybody. And... Uh, Kashrus is indeed a, uh, a very, very uh, big deal. Uh, and uh, I say over the story that when uh, in the RCC, what happened, uh, I, have the R- I came to the RCC was actually because of my wife. What do I mean? Because I was involved in, I was on the volunteer board of the RCC. Of, I was on the Vada Kashrus of the RCC, and the RCC was very small. <laughs> and and uh, because my chumi was in catering, so I knew a lot about food, and I knew about food from before. I had uh, worked as a mashkiach when I was younger. 
Uh, and uh, so they called uh, the different Rabbanim. I was in. The, I was on vacation, and in at Niagara Falls, right at the water, and I get a phone call from Rav Bess, from his uh, cell phone, from his number. So of course I said, "Oh, Rav Bess is on the phone. I have to answer." So I hear it's Rav Bess and uh, uh, a few Rabbanim. He says, "Well, in your absence." we voted that you're going to uh, work in the RCC while I was away. So I said, now I tell her best every time there's a problem, I told him it would have been easier if I would have jumped off Niagara. <laughs> it would have been easier. But uh, Baruch Hashem, the, uh, the RCC Baruch Hashem has uh, had challenges, but Baruch Hashem has grown over the years. And, uh, but really, as we do serve a single premise, is, uh, and that is, is that it's for the community. One of the great things that if we've accomplished something uh, has been to the good and the challenge, as you'll hear in a minute, is that we made a rule. One of the first rules we made, uh, or one of the early rules that we made with the stores is if I can't eat it, you can't sell it. And that was born out of being the rabbi in Calabasas because I was teaching kashrut. In those days, nobody knew I didn't do anything. So I was teaching, you know, what kosher is. I tell them, go to the super, kosher supermarkets. It's easier. And the problem is they go to the kosher supermarkets and they would buy things that were not acceptable. So that's, that was born. If I can't eat it, you can't sell it. And uh, that became a very tenuous issue because in Los Angeles in those days, uh, they were selling and they uh, would ever uh, had some level of kashrut, a K or more, was allowed to be sold. And that's how it worked. And uh, we, Baruch uh, Hashem, we told them in, within one year, this is the goal, six months, three months, two months. And they said, if we put this rule into place, they're going to leave. So I told them in the meeting, I says, I understand. But I said, it's uh, fundamental. I said, it's what I believe, right? So if it's going to fold, it'll fold. But I says, I'm not going to change from my belief. I believe it because you're, you're feeding people who have no idea. Right, and Baruch Hashem, at the last second, to the 11th hour and 59th minute, one store gave in. And then once one store gave in, they, they all buckled. They all gave in. Uh, and I had an experience. I went into one of the stores. Three years after this rule went into effect and after the year problems and, and changing over all of the distributors, because the problem was the distributors. Everything had to change in the city. How What foods came in was a very big deal. And... Uh, I walk into one of these stores, and uh, he was at the, he's not there anymore, but he's the owner of the store. I walk in, and really loud, really loud, this is the guy, screaming to all the customers, <laughs> this is the guy that forced us to take out all of the stuff from the shelves, and I drove us crazy, and all the stuff that's not there, right? And he's screaming at the top of his lungs, and then he says, right, so I'm just sitting there listening to his tirade, and then he says, and I thank him for it. Uh, because what the goal ultimately was is to make it simpler. That really was the goal. And Bar Hashem, it was quite, it's been a journey, but Bar Hashem. But we do face a great challenge now. And this is the new challenge that we're trying to deal with. And that was the uh, kidneys challenge. And I'll start with that. This has become the new challenge for the council um, in the way that we operate. Because we want everybody to go into the stores and be able to buy freely. Um, we had a rule a few years ago that not only during the year does everything have to be acceptable, acceptable, acceptably certified, but even for Pesach. Maybe that, you want to say even more important than Pesach, but Pesach was a little harder. The challenge is, okay, so then we went to the Sephardic Hashkachas, and this is something that's evolving, but it has to be a Mahadrin Sephardi Hashkacha. It can't be just a regular Sephardi, okay? that we're working on. It's good. The problem was that in Israel, they do not print the word kidney out in English. Now, this was a big deal. I was trying to get, I was trying to get everybody to agree that it has to say kidney out in English, um, that nationally we're all going to, that I was not able to get. And it's a big problem. This is a very, very big problem because not everybody reads Hebrew in Los Angeles, and even if you read Hebrew, not everybody could discern between the words 
לאוכלי קטניות וללא חשש קטניות. It's a problem. Um, and uh, we're not very happy with the way that they worded it because even the ones that are in English, it still doesn't say the word kitniot and it's not by accident. It's a big problem. Um, what we started and what you will see this year because we told them this year we're going to go all out uh, on this issue is that it's, it has to be in um, uh, show, uh, sections with kitniot signs. Um, just to tell you the difference, when we started this about six years ago, right, ten years ago we had no problem. There was no kidney use products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you for telling me. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so the, the uh, two minhagim, the Ashkenazic minig and the Sephardic minig. The Ashkenazic minig is that we don't eat legumes. We don't eat beans. Now, big deal. So you don't eat beans. That's no big deal. None of us really like beans anyway. You can go for eight days without beans. Big deal. Right, uh, you know, rice, Sephardi make a big deal. I'm going to become a Sephardi because of rice. Okay, you can live without rice also for eight days. That's not the big deal. What the big deal is boils down to one ingredient, corn syrup. That's what it all boils down to. The difference between kidney oat and non-kidney oat at the end of the day is corn syrup. Corn syrup is the cheap sugar alternative, right? And uh, it powers many, many, many foods. Uh, it powers many flavors, what goes into the foods. So the kidney yolk, so that's really what the problem is. So you have ingredients. It's not that the ingredients are beans. If the ingredients are beans, so you don't buy it. It's obvious, you know. We don't have the sign kidney yolk. Maybe we should on beans, right? Kidney yolk means beans. You know, that, that's obvious you can't eat the beans. If you don't know that, so then, uh, okay, so that I, I can't, uh, you got to work on that. But uh, the problem is the items that are made with all these ingredients, so once we started importing from Israel with reliable hashkacha, so now you have from Eretz Yisrael reliable hashkacha kidney oat, which is cakes that are made with, with corn syrup in it and other legume derivatives, but primarily corn syrup. And you have the non or the, the, I'm sorry, the non-kidney oat made without any legumes in it. So this is the battle. And every year... Uh, it becomes a bigger and bigger amount of certi reliably certified items that have kidney oat for the Sephardim that come to the United States. Now, in Eretz Yisrael, they don't have this problem. Why don't they have this problem? Because in Eretz Yisrael, they follow Rabbi Horowitz's minig, which is you only eat matzah, meat, and potatoes. And that's it. Right? They, they don't eat all of these products till recently. Now, they're also becoming Americanized, and they're also starting to have this issue. Most of the products that you see are made for American export. They're not really made for Eretz Yisrael. But we have a large Sephardic community, and we have a large Sephardic community that's religious now. That's also changed. But you have much more. So therefore, they're sending over these items, right? Um, and uh, our stores now are servicing, right, both clientele, right? So this, this is uh, the number one, and I, I, I say this is one of the most important things that you have to be sensitive to, because this is the area that you have to, when you go into the store, you have to look carefully at the items. So you're looking for two items. So you're assuming you're going to a, a, one of the RCC stores, fine. So you did a mitzvah, you went to the RCC store. So then you have a problem. You have to make sure first, one of the things that also is a great challenge is the look-alike problem. This is something that we dealt with nationally. We pushed very strongly for a change, but it hasn't taken place yet. The Pasach items and the non-Pasach items are almost identical exactly, except for one says Passover use and one says not for Passover use. Uh, in fact, one brand, I hope that they fixed it, the coloring last year, it was the number one Shaila, rabbinic Shaila that we got was a mix of the chametz, I, this is the most frightening though, the matzah mel. The matzah mel of one of the companies that was, was, was distributed, it was the exact same box. And in blue on the bottom, in a slight blue on the bottom, it said not for Passover. And the problem is, if you're not sharp and you're not used to looking, it says matzah mel. What could be wrong with matzah mel? And unfortunately, the font that the graphic artist chose disappeared in black on blue. Doesn't you can't read? So uh, that was the number one mistake last year uh, that happened, and that was mamish chametz mamish. 
was 100% pure chametz that people were eating. So you have to be careful. You have to check your stuff. No matter how much we try, no matter how much we try, and we have two people full time now, just doing the stores, primarily the stores, and they're just spending the time with the mashkichim in the stores. The mashkichim have to be, can't do anything else right now except for this problem. But even so, because what happens is, is people go to the shelf, they bought, took the wrong one. So instead of being nice and putting it anywhere else in the store, they take the, they take the chametz one. Oh, I need the Pesach one. They take the Pesach one and they put the chametz one on the shelf. And then, of course, you have the, the non-Jewish stock people. The most important people that need to read Hebrew is really the Mexican clientele, um, workers that work in the stores. Really, if we had to invent Read Hebrew America, it would be to teach them. Um, I had a, we had an idea that we wanted, didn't, uh, I hope that it'll happen at some point, is that there should be a universal agreed upon symbol for Passover that every single kashrus agency would agree to because as I expressed it uh, in the, on the meetings, national meetings, is that to forget the mashkichim, they're not important. The only person that's important is the stock boy. And the stock boy is not Jewish. You need to say on it, there needs to be a universal symbol that says Passover on it so that they know this is the Passover item. It's a very, very big problem um, because many of the items look alike and they can't know the difference. It's very, very hard. Um, sometimes the OUP helps, but uh, the Hebrew ones, they don't read Hebrew, unfortunately. So it's a very, very big issue. So you are ultimately are responsible for your kitchen, and you have to really look. And you have to really look. Um, and when you're taking things off the shelf, you have to look at each one. Because what happens is, is that the case lots, they're loading. So every case has 12 bottles of... Um, of um, to, um, uh, duck sauce. So the t- 12 bottles of duck sauce in each case, the, he's loading in 36 bottles, three cases right now. Okay? The duck sauce comes in off the truck, the Passover truck that's supposed to deliver only Passover, and it delivers a case of chametz um, thing. How does it happen? It happens. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how it happens. It happens all the time. Right? Um, and uh, so we can only do so much and therefore ultimately you have to look for yourself um, and uh, you know I do think you have a phone what you do with the phone is you take a picture of your phone and you blow it up because you're not going to be able to see half of the things because it's so small but you want to look you want to look and you want to double check and triple check right and uh, I encourage uh, husbands and wives to check you're not checking because you don't trust uh, each other, but because you're going to have a mistake. I have in my house, I have mistakes all the time, even even with even with everything, because there's so many items and there's so many chances for mistakes that you really have to uh, do due diligence over and above other than you might might do during the year. So that's in terms of the kitneos. Um, I encourage you look at the s- shelves um, and try to figure, try to understand um, what it is. Um, if it says canola oil, I said corn syrup. I'm, it's two things, uh, uh, certainly. Canola oil, in America, we don't use canola oil. We consider it kidneyos. Reason it's not, doesn't matter, right? If it says canola oil, then you know it's kidneyos. If it says corn oil, you know it's kidneyos. If it says ki- uh, corn syrup, it's kidneyos. If it says cottonseed oil, so it may kill you, but it's uh, not kidneyos. <laughs> so uh, that, that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for cottonseed oil, um, uh, so then then you'll be okay. That that so that you have to really do due diligence. You have to try your best um, in order to know it. You, if you read Hebrew, I'll just tell you the two buzzwords that you're going to see in the Hebrew certifications. Uh, one is leochle kitniot means to those that eat kitniot. That's what the words mean. Leochle kitniot. Lelo chashash kitniot means without a suspicion of kitniot. So if you see the word lo kitniot, that's good. <laughs> Not kitniot. That's what you want. Okay. That's enough on that uh, topic, at least uh, for now. Okay. Uh, actually, from there I want to go. I got a question. Just on when you were saying about the oil. So sometimes those like di- different dips that come, uh, sometimes they put a Pesach sticker, but they don't change the label. Okay. 
So this is the curse of uh, what never happened in the Gai Shiva world. It's only in the Jewish world that this happens like this. And that is the, the, the not changing the labels, um, the ingredients panel, uh, because they don't want to change the ingredients panel for eight days a year. So some of the companies are like that. Okay, so what you want to look for is it has to be imprinted in inkjet. It's going to be imprinted in inkjet that says kosher for Passover, right? What you want is that it's imprinted with a hashgacha. It's imprinted with a hashgacha. That, I mean, this is something that we deal with nonstop. This is the number one issue that we deal with. Um, that we're, we're pretty good at stopping it. But uh, the, what they try to do is the distributors, um, in my younger year, a few years ago, um, where all, all Gehenna broke loose, is they thought they were going to fool us. What they did is they sent a letter saying that the item is certified to my office, uh, but it wasn't inkjetted properly. It didn't say the name of the Ashkacha on the inkjet. It just inkjetted kosher lepesach in Hebrew. <coughs> And uh, they sent it over, uh, and uh, we caught it. And uh, that from that year, this is about six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, after that, they knew that nothing's going to happen again. He said, "We're going to lose twenty-five thousand dollars." So I told him, "If I go to court, you're going to lose more than twenty-five thousand dollars." I said, "You falsified the documents that you sent to my office." I said, "You lose more than twenty-five thousand dollars." And that was the end. Uh, since then, it's gotten much better. Uh, but uh, so, but you're right. So the panel, you have to go by based on the certification. Meaning, so if it says kosher lepesach, owe you, right? Then you could rely. You, you can rely. Don't don't go by the ingredients. If you have a question and you don't see a reliable certification, then you know that they're probably playing games. You know, they're probably playing games. But uh, but if you see a reliable certification, if it says kidney oat. Right, uh, you know, if it's in the kidney or shelf, then it's going to be correct. You know, that's the problem. That's the issue. Um, the so, so you have one of the, the so sometimes you're going to have the wrong ingredients panel. So for example, you even have it on Coke. So Coca Cola, we are all familiar with the yellow cap with the OUP, right? So it's a yellow cap OUP. We're all familiar with that. Now, if you look at the ingredients panel, it says corn syrup. Right, I, I think Coke says sugar and or curd syrup. So I promise you, I promise you that the only time there's an ounce of sugar in that Coke is over Passover, OUP. They never put sugar in Coke ever because sugar costs more money in the United States than corn syrup, right? So that's why if you want sugar Coke, you have to buy uh, Mexican Coke. I'm not dealing with the cash of Mexican Coke, but that's the reason why, why, why in the world do they import Mexican Coke? Who cares? Why, what do you need Mexican Coke for? I don't know if you noticed, the glass bottle Mexican Coke. Everybody wants the glass bottle Mexican Coke. What's the difference? It's just Coke. The answer is because in Mexico, sugar is cheaper, so they use sugar. In America, corn syrup is cheaper because of the price control. So therefore, they use corn syrup. That's why it doesn't, it's not the same. Um, so the OUP, so that, that's using uh, real sugar. So you, you can ignore the ingredients panel. So if you see a reliable certification, then the ingredients panel is secondary to that, um, that issue. The second confusing point that, I, that we have is regarding Coke, and this is a good time to address it, is that y you, you have to have um, a rabbi uh, and uh, an agency that you're going to rely on because there are going to be differences of opinion in certain issues uh, between the OU, between the CRC, and between the Star K. Right? And the major, those are the major organizations. Uh, in the United States. So this is the OK and others, but those are the major ones regarding this type of an issue. So why is it that in one book you open, it says Diet Coke is kosher for Passover? And you open up a different uh, organization's book, it says uh, not kosher for Passover. How could it be? <laughs> is it or is it not? Which one is it? So the answer is that there's a machloket. As you know, with the Jewish people, there has to be a machloket. That's what we specialize in. has to be a disagreement. So one of the questions is that <coughs> NutraSweet, if you uh, take NutraSweet, NutraSweet is, is made out of corn. 
but it's what's called, to simplify the concept, it's a double derivative. It's not a direct derivative. If you take corn oil or corn syrup, everybody holds, or our I mean, the accepted minig in America now, is we don't use that. Nobody uses that. Okay, fine. But let's say you can, I, I'm not a scientist, I leave that to others, but if you could then change that formula somehow into what's called um, um, NutraSweet, right, a circulus, whatever it is, NutraSweet, so that's a double derivative. That's a, and that in halacha, some consider that to be a, a, a shinoi of a shinoi, a very, very changed, very distant from the original. That is the position of the OU. Uh, the CRC, Chicago Rabbinical Council, of Gedalia Schwartz, that's all, uh, he didn't hold of that. He didn't hold it was. So therefore, obviously Diet Coke is made of the NutraSweet. Right? And uh, so you're going to have a natural machloket. The OU holds that it's good and it's uh, kosher for Passover, the CRC would hold that it's not good. Right? I, I, the reason that I'm explaining it to you is because someone was texting me yesterday right, about the Diet Coke. They can't understand. Uh, I, I bought it, it says OUP, and everybody's telling me it's not for Pesach, it's a mistake. So I'm just explaining to you that's the reason why you have the issue. So you can, uh, listen, uh, yes, Rabbi Horowitz, uh, I think that the Minig America is uh, to allow the Diet Coke, yes, Rabbi Horowitz, but I, I think that's the Minig America because, God forbid, people should go without Diet Coke. You know, that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, Coke adds life. So Diet Coke is Mamash Chaim. So, you know, the, so that, that's the explanation regarding the Diet Coke issue. And along those lines, it's important to note that um, I'm trying to go through all of the problems that you're going to see. I mean, the other questions, you, no, I'm just trying to go the problems. Is why do I have to spend $10, $8.99 for a box of 100 Nutra Sweets with an OUP? And uh, not OUP, but Passover, reliable, but uh, reliable Passover, and uh, and um, I can get a thousand of them for eight ninety nine at Costco. It's the same NutraSweet. You look in the ingredients; they both say NutraSweet. Uh, so the answer is, it's not the same. It's not the same NutraSweet, and it's not the same way that they process it. Right. So one is coming from Eretz Yisrael back to the United. It's processed on a special machine a special dryer, and sent over here to the United States. But that's why. So it's not, even though the ingredients are the same, the machinery is not the same. And that's heavily what you deal with. A lot of the problems of Passover, and this is a very important point, and this is where many of these self-professed books, I think they're, they're less popular now. But one of the early challenges that we have is these people put out these books, not so much, you'll forgive me, not so much for Ashkenazim, more for the Sephardic world, Right, uh, and you'll understand why in a minute. All of these magical works that Heinz ketchup is kosher le Pesach. Heinz ketchup is kosher le Pesach for Svaidim. Because it only has corn syrup. It only has corn syrup. What could be wrong? Corn syrup, we eat corn syrup. What they're ignoring is all of the machinery equipment issue. Right, that when you have shared machinery, right, you're going to have problems. You don't know when you know when your problem is going to crop up. So you're going to rely on bittel. You're going to rely. It's very very weak to say all of these things. You don't know what they're doing at that time, right? Uh, so that's the that's the reason. Again, for Ashkenazim, it's not as popular this problem because you don't have natural ingredients other than water. Most of the things are problematic because corn syrup is all over the place. But for the Sephardim, they have this problem. It's a very serious problem for the Sephardim. Well, Hashem, now you have JSOR, you have a lot of Sephardi organizations that have come to power in the last two, three years that uh, knock the others out of the park. People know, rely on these more, more esteemed organizations that are putting out books that are reliable, so it's uh, making them less likely. So, the, so you want to make sure, so that, that's the reason why you find that uh, the items that are look-alike are not, it's either the ingredients are slightly different and you're not going to realize, or more likely the machinery that it's made on has to be koshered for Passover before it's done. And that brings us to another area, and that is the area of spices. Spices. So here you also 
run into a problem of the packing issue. Now, spice, there ain't nothing in there but spice. Well, what's the difference? If it's, uh, if it's black pepper, it's black pepper. Yeah, there's no two ways to make black pepper. All black pepper is kosher le Pesach. Right, and when we were younger, that was the rule. Uh, it's, it remains true till today. The only thing is like this. We ourselves oversee a number of small packers. Now, how they make money on this, I don't know. But uh, you know, everybody wants to be a packer. So when you're a packer in a small place, okay, they fill 100 jars with black pepper, then they fill 100 jars with uh, cinnamon, then they fill 100 jars with, with onion powder, which is chametz, right, and, uh, chametz onion powder. The, I mean, constantly, the machinery, every, the contaminants are all over the place. So that's, more, that's, that's the problem that you have by the small packers. Um, and therefore, sometimes you could have that uh, an item that sh- is, is theoretically innocuous could be a problem. Now, during the year, you ask me, many people call me, it's okay, you could eat it, it's fine. It's fine, you could eat it. And Pesach, it's a little bit more strict, not, ju- not simply because you have to be more religious on Pesach, but <laughs> because the reality is that on Pesach, when you have cross-contamination, you have to know just how much cross-contamination is likely to happen in such a type of place. So you need a little bit of experience, you know, you need to know a certain amount of information about the place. So for example, if you buy salt, non-iodized salt is almost always good for Pesach, right? Uh, It's almost always good for Pesach, right? You look in the books, we'll talk about the books in a minute, it's almost always good for Pesach, okay? When a company is packing salt, and you're buying it in that round little container. I don't know why they all come round. I don't know why that is, but they come round. You buy them in that round container. They're not packing anything but salt. They're packing thousands and thousands and thousands of salt. There's no cross-contamination problem. Okay? You're not going to have any cross-contamination problem. But if you're buying some off-brand of spice in 99 cent store, you know, whatever that one is, okay, of course they're packing, you know, they're sitting there, you know, they're packing it. Uh, those are small packers. Right, so therefore you have to be more discerning, you know, in terms of it. So therefore, is that you do want to have some level of just thinking going on, um, because that there you would have some level of cross contamination in smaller um, places, and you have to have a feel for it, you know, or uh, you know, you buy something that's reliably certified. The uh, question of water. Right is is a good point to discuss. Uh, this uh, will bring us to two points. Uh, one is water. Now, water, there ain't nothing in here but water. What could be in water? So the only thing that could be in water, right? So any flavored water is not a problem. I'm sorry. Any any flavored water you can't use. Any flavored water you can't use. Unflavored water, right, should not be a problem should not be a problem, and generally it's not a problem. The only problem is that they add the minerals. They add the minerals. So minerals, right, could be a question of kidney oat. It could be a question of kidney oat. So you might have seen last year with the Kirkland crisis, the Kirkland crisis of water, right? So the, the question was what to do with the Kirkland water bottles. Because the Kirkland water bottles is uh, the uh, the OU guide is uh, schizophrenic. It's uh, it's not listed in one one side of the guide, and it's this way this year as well. So the, first of all, you should know there are two different Kirkland waters that are sold um, in California. The reason I was on the phone is I meant to check before I came in. That's, that was my crisis. I didn't remember to check before I came. So this year as well, California is blessed to have the Kirkland water that has the minerals added. So the, uh, <clears throat> the real answer is that as long as you buy it before Pesach, there's no shayla, right? There's no question. Because you're talking about an infinitesimally small amount of minerals added, and it's before Pesach, and it's kidneys, so it's bottle, and the bottle can't for the It's 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 100% permitted. 
And therefore, the, in my house, you'll have uh, the Kirkwood water is not a question. Um, but th that's the reason. Now, the reason why the OU guide is not going to list it, and this is an important point, and the difference between the RCC and the OU. The OU guide correctly has to list things that are 100 million percent clear for Passover. And that's the right way to do it. They have to tell you things that have zero kidney use in it. You can't use lambdas to matter something, to permit something. They have to tell you the facts. But they have to tell you that it says kidney use in it, therefore you shouldn't use it. That's true. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not kosher for, it's not uh, uh, um, neutral for Passover. Uh, the RCC is not making the book. I'm answering you, can you use it? Our stores are telling you, can you eat it in a pragmatic way? For Ashkenazi to be strict, as I spoke with Rebbes, to be strict on eating a parts per million of kidneys made before Pesach, as a legazang. And this we don't, we don't accept such a chumra. And that was Rebbes Rebbe agreed. And that's why, so we do allow that uh, to be sold. We would, we would drink and we would allow because you don't have to be so strict. Right, I think the OU is correct. They can't list it because uh, the, their job is to answer is it, is it kidney is free? Their job is not to answer. If you call the helpline, it could be they'll tell you you could drink it. I, I, I didn't call, but it could be they'll tell you to drink it. Say not to buy it on Pesach, though? They don't say. They say that it's not on their... It's not on the their... Say, no, you could drink it. No, you could buy it. Uh, not to buy it on Pesach. No. Yes, yeah, so not to, don't buy it on Pesach. I think it's permitted to buy it on Pesach also because it was bottled before Pesach. They made it before Pesach. So I don't think it's such a question. I had this with him, but I don't think it's such a question. So I don't think if you're a big uh, guy, a big drinker. Now, it could be that you could say, listen, I'm going to buy Arrowhead for in honor of Pesach. I'm, I'm just trying to explain to you the question because otherwise you're going to see there's a lot of tension on this issue last year or two years ago. So I'm just trying to give you the background so that you understand that person who's drinking the Kirtland water is not a guy. It's Nishkin Shegetz, right? That I will tell you, I had seen, but you have to daven. If you see after Dishmaya. Tell you what happened to me. We have, so, so I will tell you though what, what happened so that you should understand. I'm answering you for you in your home. Right? This is a, a class for the home. So I'm not answering you the policy of the RCC in terms of what we will do at a party. So I'll tell you what happened. We have a big party on Pesach that's coming up. A caterer is doing a party on Pesach. So they wanted to use a water, Topo Poco, Toco Coco. How do you say it? Topo yeah, that's it. That's the word. Okay. Don't you? I don't know. It's nonsense. Okay. Okay. So I told him, so I told him, I told him, is this for a private party or is this for a public party? I mean, is it someone at their say there or is it for a public uh, bar mitzvah? So he says, no, this is for a public bar mitzvah. So we can't use it. Can't use it. He can't use it, to, but he says it's only water. So I told him, I told him, if you're asking me, can you drink it? That's one answer. But at a public party on Shabbos or in Yom Tov, when the phone is not working, and I have some nevach, some poor mashkiach that's going to be there, and he's going to get hit. Half the people are going to say it doesn't have Pesach on it. Half the people are going to say it doesn't need Pesach. I, I can't have. I can't, I can't, I can't green light it. I says, I can't. I says, it's Pesach. Pesach, the mashkiach has to be. I says, you have to go get one with an OUP. I told him three burns. So he writes me back. The lady's going berserk. The mother of the bar mitzvah boy. You know, you think that uh, they say bridezilla. Bridezilla, you try dealing with the mother of a bar mitzvah boy, that's worse than bridezilla. So she's, mommy, she sends me, she sends me from the OU directory that it says that uh, plain water is mutter. So she sends me. She wants to know why is the RCC not allowing it. Okay, fine. So I say, I hear, I'm going to think about it, but I, I, I said my, my, the concept I hold of, okay, I send one of the stat, one of the team members in the RCC, I tell him, do me a favor. Google, I don't know what this water is. 
I don't know what it is. Go, go find me about this water and tell me what it is. He sends me back. Only Hashem could do this. He, go, he goes into the... We can, I think you can access it too, but we, we can access the back end uh, of the OU. Some things, I think you can access it too. He, go, he goes into the back end of the OU directory online, and it says, this water is not to be used on Pesach. <laughs> I kid you not. This water is not to be used on Pesach. My assumption is, is because it's made on the same line. Topo Chico? Topo Chico? They make a flavored one. And it seemed, I mean, this is my guess, I, I didn't bother to pursue it. So I sent it, so Hashem, it says, Mamish, this water cannot be used on Pesach, online. I don't know why nobody knows about it, I can't answer you. So I sent it to the person. So he says, where did you get that from? So I says, uh, I say, God, but uh, I got it from the OU site. No, they didn't answer again. But, uh, so, but there, there, so sometimes you have to be machmir. The machmir, my, my chumr was not so much because of that. It was more because, <laughs> that was just from Hashem. Because you have to know, there's a difference, and that's why I want to give you just a proviso, there's a difference between the RCC and the, and the functions and the RCC when I'm answering in, in private. So private, I, you can 100% drink the water without any question. Uh, private, if you're publicly, uh, you want to buy an OUP bottle, you know, it could be that's a nice thing to do, you know, for a shul, for a thing that I leave the roof to decide, but uh, that, 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 that's in terms of a community issue. The next very, very important issue is the bagged salad issue. That, that's the number one. So here the RCC differs uh, from uh, the other agencies. Uh, but I did get uh, vindicated this year because uh, the CRC changed to the RCC position. I was uh, laughing. I, I got a kick out of that. So I'll explain to you the, the difference and where it stems from. The the RCC, in terms of the stores, is, is based for the consumer. It's not based on every chumr. It's based on the, on the practicality of the consumer, of what we feel the consumer needs to run their house. All right, that's different than the catering division. We use different rules for the catering. But in the supermarkets, that's the rule that we use. So I presented to Rev Bess that this is not a reasonable concern. The bagged salad is not a reasonable concern. Well, what they wanted, and we tried a few years ago, was that it should have the P on it. Okay, so what does the P mean? Right, what, what's, it's just lettuce. What could be wrong? It's just lettuce in here. Right, I'm leaving aside the bugs. We'll do that in a minute. Right, there's only lettuce in here. What could be? So the answer is like this. When you cut up the lettuce... Right, you know, when you cut up lettuce, so it turns uh, brown. So how do you stop it from turning brown? So you put in a small amount of something into the water, of something into the water, some type of citric acid into the water. And uh, that helps at least initially so that the lettuce doesn't like, you know, the second you cut it, it turns brown. So that helps stop the, the browning a little bit. So that citric acid, so there is a small amount of citric acid that's chametz. So citric acid could be made from three things, from chametz, from kidneys, and from Pesach, from neutral Pesach. So practically, the United States does not use chametz citric acid. It's a European problem, but it's not an American problem. So you're dealing with a toss-up between kidneys and Pesach, Passover certified um, citric acid. So as I, uh, so but the way that it works is it's a parts. It's the same like the water. It's a parts per million. Literally, when I, when I went to the factories, so they take, I kid you not, they take a little cup, the flume is bigger than the size of this room, okay, flooding with water all over the place. <laughs> they take a cup, they pour it in the flume, 
right? And that's it. There's million, uh, thousands of gallons of water, thousands of gallons of water, and they're putting in this little cup of powder. So that, uh, and uh, therefore, it is uh, parts per million kidney is shayla. So it comes back similar to the water that I told you. It's even less than the water, but uh, than the shayla of the water. And uh, so that uh, I also presented to Rebbes, and he, he laughed. He said, yes, that, that's okay. That's okay. Now, would I put a C RCCP on it? No. RCCP, for example, the onions that we certify for Pesach, right, the Gill's onions, so they were makbid, that the citric acid has to be a Pesach citric acid, because that I'm, I'm giving you, I'm putting my label on it. I'm not telling you you can eat it, I'm telling you it's Passover produced. So that we talk to use citric acid. Uh, we use 365 Passover citric acid, but that's how we do it with the, with the onions. But when it comes to saying, could you eat something? Now, it's easy to be machmi. The problem is that if you don't have any salad on your shows, we can eat. It was too hard to get them to cooperate to get the pea stuff here. They're interested in New York. Meaning, uh, you know, they're not interested. The money, the money is in New York. It's not here. The, the religious community here is nothing is infinitesimal, right? They need to focus on getting all of the P to New York. We are just an afterthought. And therefore, it wasn't timing. I, I mean, when I worked on this a few years ago, I, I couldn't get their stuff. I couldn't get them to send the P here. And that's when I gave up and I presented the Shaila to Rebbes. And therefore, we don't bother with it at all because it's, it's an impossible situation. I, I can't get it to time right. I can't get the right product on the shelf. And therefore, it's as we... We are going, first of all, it could be 100% that it's Passover citric acid anyway, right? It could be it's Passover citric acid, uh, but either way, it would be permitted. And that's why you do not need to look, this is the number one question that I get by far, number one, is you don't need to have a Passover, uh, it doesn't have to be with a P on it. Now, does it have to be certified at all? Uh, so the answer is the RCC position is it doesn't need to be certified at all. We tested for many years already, that uh, that the garden salad, the two main salads that you all eat, is the garden salad and the coleslaw. Our tests have shown continuously and consistently that the bugs wash clean to allow the product to be used. And that is the RCC position, right? And uh, that's why we don't care which certification is on it. Now, I know other information also behind the scenes. Well, it goes on, but uh, but that's in terms of garden salad and uh, coleslaw. A garden salad and the I'm sorry, yes, and, and the red cabbage. It includes the the garden salad, the coleslaw, the red cabbage, and the shredded lettuce. Those four are fine. Anything that has romaine and beyond, that is a bug problem. That's a bug problem. Uh, you have to deal with it. It's not a Pesach problem. It's just a bug problem. Right, um, but bugs are serious. You know, bugs are big problems. So that's the uh, the bugs. So then those products are a problem. We're going to talk about romaine lettuce for Pesach in a minute. But but that's uh, in terms of, in terms of, um, so so we hold that it's kosher without any certification, and we hold that you don't need any Pesach certification. So if you came just for that, Rabbi Horowitz, it's worth paying me just for that. Uh, I charge extra for the leniencies I told you. <laughs> the chumras, those I don't charge extra. Those I don't charge for. It's the leniencies that I charge for. And those can be purchased during Pesach or it has to be before? Yeah, so that's the question. It seems to be it could be purchased during Pesach also. We don't, we don't see that there's a reason to be a machmer. Mo most of the time you're getting it, it was made before. You know, by the time they, they can flip it and they can get it to your shelf... Uh, it's 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 good. Okay. You wanted to ask or I answered. So the leafy, the other leafy thing's the enemy. Yeah, okay. yeah that's the enemy. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the great problems we, <laughs> in the industrial, on the on the restaurant side, it's very hard to see 
what's inside the bag, and it doesn't always come labeled. So they often send us pictures to the office, does it have romaine in it or not? Because sometimes light romaine and dark iceberg, they can't tell the difference uh, between them because romaine definitely has much, much more bugs and it's much stickier and much more problematic. Okay, let's talk about romaine. So romaine lettuce for, the ha for your house, because here we're practical for your house. So the, it, it really is, Hashem makes a test for us. It seems to me that right around Pesach time, all of the bugs come out of hibernation. I don't know how they know. <laughs> I, I mamish don't know how they know this. They come out of hibernation right before Pesach. So two years ago was the worst, I, I think it was two, was the worst year on record that I remember in terms of lettuce. Um, uh, it was extremely difficult. So I will tell you a secret that uh, Hashem helped us to develop. And uh, this was developed really for, um, for Moshe Shirazi, for the person who washes the lettuce for the community, the MLS brand that the RCC certifies. So he's a tzaddik. The guy's mamish, mamish, a tzaddik. Um, mamish, uh, the amount that he dumps and his, uh, the siyata dishmaya, you need help. You need Hashem's help. So he called me a few years ago. Rabbi, just, the, the, the lettuce is a disaster. What are we going to do? So we daven, I told him. That's what we're going to do. Okay, then we came up with an idea. I told him, we, we, we came up with an idea. Okay, go do the following. Go to Costco, um, what's it called, Restaurant Depot, and any, we came up with a number of names, and I want you to buy two cases in each place. Okay, run back to the, to the commissary, and I want you to filter the first water in soap. Take the two cases and filter the water the original water. Don't wash it. Wash the bugs into the filter. And through that method, through that system, that's where we develop the new system, how we do it for Pesach. During the year, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. But the problem is Pesach. <laughs> we have to all, everybody's waiting for the lettuce. So what we have found, so this is, I'll tell you the secret for yourself also. Hashem, what does it say? If there's a, if the Yidden are attacked in one place, uh, what's the Pasuk? In, by Yaakov Avinu, in Yavai Esav, if Esav, I apologize, I'm not like a horror, I can't remember what I'm saying, but, but if Hashem will come and, and strike Am Yisrael one, the other, the other one will be okay. So, it's mamish like that in the lettuce too. We grow lettuce in Salinas, and at least. Some of the lettuce comes from Salinas, California, and some of it comes from Phoenix, and some of it comes from other places. So what we did is you buy from all of the places and then you see which one is cleanest. Right? And Siata Dishmaya, since we started that, he can get it clean. Because you can't wash out bugs. If the bugs are a lot, you can't wash them out. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. For your house, you can sit here and play with it. You can't play with it uh, when you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of heads of lettuce. It's not going to work. Right, and we have found that that's successful. So how does that apply to yourself? So when you go to Costco, Costco always sells at least two to three different origins of lettuce. Because they sell, at Costco, they sell the regular, the organic, which I normally do not recommend, but they sell one, the organic, and the, this, what they call, um, um, Artisan, the artisan romaine. So it's a, it's it's the cute little guy. It's a small little guy. So I will tell you statistically that cute little guy is much much cleaner, in general. I can tell you. I've checked thousands, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds myself. Um, it generally is much much cleaner. Um, uh, but between those three, if you buy a bag of each, you don't need that much. So you buy a bag of each. You're gonna one of them is gonna be clean. Right, now how do you deal with it? So basically is, is you're gonna 
You're going to look at the lettuce. You always want to look. You talk to the lettuce, right? And you dab him, right? And then you look inside a little bit. Okay, you look inside a little bit. If you see bugs, lots of bugs, especially green ones, okay? The green ones, if you see a bug jump, don't worry. That's okay. If the bug, if you see the bug is green and he's not moving, right, forget it. Take the head and throw it away. It ain't going to work. And go to the next one. Go to the next one. Because if it is an aphid, aphid is the green little sticky bug. Uh, forget about it. It's not for you. Because you're not going to know what to do. You're gonna, you're gonna, if there's one, there's more than one. If there's more, one, there's more than one. And they don't wash out. I mean, if you have a professional like Rabbi Burson, so he, he knows how to deal with it. But, uh, but for, the, for people that don't know how to deal with it, right, you're not going to pick it up. You're not going to discern it fast enough. Uh, and therefore, throw it away. Now, I have found that if you have five heads in a Costco, it's five heads to a bag or three heads to a bag in Rouse, right? Then it's not consistent. I mean, you could have one head bad and one head is okay, right? You look inside, you look inside, right? So if you see the green sticky little bugs, chuck the whole thing and start again. Try another one. Don't bother. But if you uh, only see a jumping bug, which is called a thrip, the thrip will wash out. It'll be okay for, for, for romaine. It's okay. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you take it, you chop the bottom, right? Put them in uh, soapy water. Put them in, take water. Fill up, uh, fill up a basin with water. Take uh, palm olive and uh, put it in. Don't worry, it'll clean up your lettuce better. It's good. Don't worry about it. And uh, you put it in there, you mix it in. How much do you need to put in? You need to put in enough that the water feels slimy. Feels like there's oil in the water. And you put it in there, you mush it around a little bit, right? Now, don't leave it in there for, ten, for, for half an hour because you're going to kill it, right? You just mush it in there for a little bit, right? And then you rinse off each leaf on the direct water, both sides, right? If it looks clean and you do this on the direct water, both sides, it'll be good. So you looked at it, you saw before, it doesn't look buggy, right? You don't see any real things, right? Right, on top of that, you put it in the water, you rinsed it under direct water, right? My experience has been that it's good. My experience has been that it's good. So the, the question, do you have to check it? So a person is asking me, do you have to check it? I, I believe that for a housewife that's doing each piece, you don't have to use the rules like we use in the RCC. I, I think that a housewife who's in general going to look at the stuff in general much more closely than we can when you do, when you're doing what the, the what a person has to do on a daily basis, you have cases and cases, uh, you can't do this. If you're doing a small amount, right, you're gonna look at the leaves, right? You have to go on a light box with a, with a, with a romaine lettuce, I don't think so. Lanius dati, I don't think so. I think that if a person soaks it, a person looked at it before, they don't see anything really, right? And then you wash it under direct water. So sometimes I tell people that they should, now, if you hear that there's an alert, right now there's no alert. It's too close, we're not close enough yet. If you hear that there's an alert that we send out, maybe I'll send you Rabbi Horowitz, if we find that we're having an aphid problem, so then you need to add one more step. So I, I should add that now. If there's an aphid problem, so then really you need to take a brush and you need to brush it. You need to be extra strict because the aphids are hard to discern really and they're hard to come off so that's harder then you would need to use the brush if it's just a regular season of thrips right so the thrips will never survive when you left it in the water and then you rinsed it under direct water so that that's the difference uh, this is only for hearts i'm sorry I, I i have to add this is only for hearts this is not this is not for romaine leaves I mean, hearts are the ones you know like this Right. Uh, if you really want to be, you, know, you want to not worry at all, so either buy the artisan one, right? Or, uh, you know, the, also the, the, the more inside you get to the romaine, usually the cleaner it is. Usually the cleaner it is. So I usually throw away the one or two leaves because they're rotten, they're ugly. Uh, but, uh, but again, that has been my findings. If you hear 
in the next week or so that we send out that uh, the stuff is very bad, right? So then uh, you will know. Um, Bli neder, if Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Horowitz uh, reminds me, I'll, I'll send you the code. But what we, we work on codes. So he sends me, uh, um, Mr. Shirazi is a tzaddik gomer. He wants that the community should eat kosher. So based on the system that I told you, he sends me the codes. So he tells me before Pesach, okay, this brand and this code, clean. And that, that's what we base it on. But then we base it on. Uh, then if you buy that for sure, you, you can, that, that means that it's uh, for sure. There, uh, over the years, there are statistics. That's just the way it is. There are just statistics. Um, so then believe that there, if I get the codes, I will, I will send it. You can send it out and where we got it. So if we get it from Costco, that's the easiest one. We tried to do a Costco one. Um, and then you could try to match it, so that would be the easiest for you uh, to do. So the milk, so the, the shaila of milk is twofold. One is we don't want to use, we don't want to benefit from something that ate chametz on Pesach. So it used. To, so if the cows ate chametz, we don't want to have that. That's one shell. Uh, eggs also, the eggs ate in their freed chametz, so therefore you don't want to eat something that benefited from chametz. It's a chumr. It's a chumr. Uh, the second is, uh, and therefore we don't, we try to buy our eggs before Pesach. You try to stock up on your eggs before Pesach. That's the minig. The minig is that you try your best to buy eggs, right? That's why you have to rent a refrigerator just for your eggs, right? You need one refrigerator just for eggs. Now, I'll tell you a secret that if you don't buy enough eggs before Pesach, if you go and you order on Instacart, right, or Costco.com, same day delivery, 10% markup, Right, right after Pesach, you go online. I mean, the first two days, you go order eggs. Those eggs weren't laid on Pesach either. I'll tell you a secret. They weren't laid on Pesach either. They can't process eggs so fast. It doesn't work like that. Right, you can buy the eggs also then. But uh, the mini is that you buy up all of the eggs before Pesach and you put them in your refrigerator. Milk is the same way. You buy the milk before Pesach. There's a second question of the milk is the same as the water is the vitamin A and D also could have kidneyos in it, the is less likely, um, to have in it, right? Uh, so generally, you, you want to stick, I think uh, most people nowadays, even Ralph's sells kosh, um, uh, chalav Yisrael milk for Pesach, right? So th- that's the reason. The reason to buy the chalav Yisrael milk is that the nutrients that are added are, um, are Pesach, well, they're actually not added, they're not added, right? Uh, for eight days, they get a waiver from the um, from the USDA, or whichever I think it's the USDA, whichever is the one that oh, FDA is they whoever oversees the milk. Um, so they get a waiver. So there's no vitamin D and A added in it, um, and that's how they get around it. Uh, the the ones that say kosher for Passover by the OU that are chal of stam, so either they're relying on bittel for the milk that they did do allow. Uh, for the milk to rely on the bittel, or they're making sure the, the, that the vitamins are, are neutral, that they're not chametz. Uh, but that's the idea. So generally, you should buy the milk um, before Pesach. If it says, Ane kosher la Pesach, and it's chal of Yisrael, you have no problem. You really have no problem, because it's always milk before Pesach. They don't use the milk. They don't milk on Pesach in the chal of Yisrael farms to be sold to Yidin. It is milk. You can't not milk the cow. But uh, they, uh, it's not. It's not for the Yidden. The the. Now let's talk about the olive oil question. The olive oil question. Uh, so here is a, a problem of false information. False information. And uh, I myself was given, I myself was given false information. So if you heard my class before, you can hear me contradict myself. So I was given information based on research uh, that uh, that most virg- extra virgin olive oil is um, false, um, false, uh, falsified. Is not the right word. Is um, is. 
is mixed in with other oils. There's a fancy word for it, I don't remember, sorry. Is mixed in with other oils. Adulterated. I thought that's the word. Thank you. Thank you. Adulterated. Is adulterated with other oils. And it was based upon a study, I think it was UC Davis. I think that's an agricultural college, right? UC Davis. And uh, they did a, a, a study, and it, most of them, there's not enough extra virgin olive oil. And for years I quoted that study, mm-hmm. and that was the position. And therefore, um, we wanted only certified olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I apologize, let me back up, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the way extra virgin olive oil means, by definition, by legal definition, extra virgin olive oil means cold press olive oil. If it's a cold press olive oil, so then you have no problem for Pesach. It's cold press. There ain't nothing in there but olive oil, so there's no problem. The problem was that we were given information that told us that uh, there could be adulterated oil that's mixed into it, either non, non-extra non virgin or other types of olive oil. And uh, based upon that, we were not happy. And with other agencies, we um, said that it has to be certified. Um, but I, I can tell you, in the research now of the last few months, it's not true. The, the report was similar, um, was paid for and funded by uh, uh, olive oil producers here in the United States. And the similar to what they accuse, um, I think, some of the drug companies of, is that when your study is funded, you look differently at things. I have that same problem in cash resources sometimes. That uh, you know, uh, in my arguments, some of the arguments that you see that the positions that the RCC takes, is because we don't get paid for certain things. So therefore, we take different positions than than others might. Um, but uh, but uh, and uh, and therefore. This year we're going backpedaling that any extra virgin olive oil is is okay. Meaning last year we only allowed OU, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, Now we feel that there's really no reason for that. There's no reason to limit only to the OU uh, brand. If If it's a popular brand, a big brand, any extra virgin olive oil is going to be okay. I think you're going to have a problem finding one that's not like that. But uh, if you want, to in, on a person, I'm giving you the background. I don't think you need to worry so much. If you're asking me personally, I would stick stick with the OU extra virgin olive oil. It's just easier. It doesn't have to be, have a P on it, because that gives you an extra level of assurance that uh, that it's good. You're not paying any extra for it, you're going to get a Costco anyway. So what's the difference? Right? You can buy a Costco anyway. The cheapest place to buy it. So again, extra virgin olive oil. If you want to be strict, you get. You want to be super strict, you get a P on it. If you want to be strict, you get an OU on it. But there is room to be lenient. I, I don't want to, because anybody that heard me two years ago, I spoke about this, I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I was based upon everything I had read, but it was not true. I was uh, very upset about it, but uh, Hashem helped me, that's the way it goes. You know, so... Uh, lenient, no extra. With, you can, all year round, for sure you could be lenient. That's not a question. No, no. On Pesach itself, extra virgin olive oil, even without a hechsher. But if you're asking me, uh, it doesn't cost any more, so get the OU. The reason why the OU one is a little bit better is because you have more eyes on the, on the, on the, on the production. So when the rabbi going, he's going to inspect, he's going to see. So he's not expecting for Pesach, but you just have more, more eyes. So uh, I, I think it's a nicer thing to do. So if you're asking me nicer, I would get one with the OU. Um, I say the OU could be others also. I'm just the OU is the most popular one, right? To get so I would encourage you to. But again, remember a million percent. Don't confuse the extra light with the extra virgin. Okay, it's only extra virgin. So with that, I bring you to an important another thing, very important. Now, if you are like my Rebbitson, so then you don't like cottonseed oil. I don't know what cottonseed ever did wrong to anybody. I don't know why everybody hates it like they do, but they don't like this cotton seed. I don't know what the problem is. Okay, so now you see you have only one option. If you don't want to eat cotton seed, and you're Sfar- an Ashkenazi, if you're Sephardi, you can eat canola oil, so you don't have a problem. But uh, but uh, if you uh, are an Ashkenazi, what are you going to do? So you could buy walnut oil. 
The problem is that you have to mortgage your house to buy the wall and oil. You got to mortgage your house, and then you have to smell it before you make your cake. Because if it's rancid, uh, your cake is going to be rancid. And it turns. It does turn. It does turn. It's a risk that you have from nut, nut oils do turn. It's a problem. So, uh, so I will tell you that last year I discovered a new oil. I'm sure you all know about it already, but uh, avocado oil. So the chosen avocado oil is OU, and it's good for Passover year round. I was praying that they were going to announce that the Amazon brand, which is one quarter the price, <laughs> that's also 100% vir extra virgin avocado oil is good. Unfortunately, they didn't. I tried to research it. They didn't. Uh, I couldn't get any info on it. It's always risky to with Amazon or any of these places because they change distributors all the time. So I, I can't answer you. But the chosen brand avocado oil is good. Um, what it has only an OU. It doesn't need a P. I'll tell you something funny. I have so many people that come to the house, and so much confusion. And I tell everybody to please look. I tell the kids to look. Everybody has to look. <laughs> so I took out a marker. And I wrote a P on the oils when I brought it in. Because uh, everybody is going to ask. If people come to the house, I have everybody coming. So I put little P's on it so I don't have to deal with the problem <laughs> of people asking me, of not realizing or, or thinking that it's bad. Um, so now the chosen brand. Now I will tell you, buy early because last year Costco ran out. It was not available last year because all the Jews bought out. Because who, who the heck uses avocado? It costs a fortune, right? So all the Jews bought it out. So I will tell you, and if they don't have it at Costco, if you go onto Instacart and you go to Business Costco, there they have it. There they have a, a lot more of it. Um, so I will tell you. Um, but I would buy that one item. It's like matzah. I would buy it early because they will run out. They will run out. Uh, I've tracked it already a bit. So you want to get it early. It's not cheap, but it does. it is good. The other one that you could use is the spray, is the avocado oil spray. That one also you could use. Now, just because, I, I just want to point, you out, point out, just because the oil is good does not mean that the spray is good for two reasons. One is the sometimes you have a problem that it's bottled in a different facility, and that facility could be a problem, especially when you call dealing with um, sprayers. These types of things uh, are problematic. Um, uh, but uh, we did. It is it is good. Both the spray, the avocado oil chosen avocado oil spray bottles. Um, so those are good. Those are good, um, and they're good for cooking. They're good for baking. Um, and they don't have a taste. I don't know how, but it doesn't have a taste. And, uh, you know, people are happier with it. So I would buy that. The avocado oil spray is in Costco at a, a negligible price compared to buying something that's, uh, you know, that's specially made. So that's another secret that you heard here first. I'm just sorry, does it need a P? No. It doesn't have a P on it. It's not going to have a P. It doesn't need the P. So the safflower oil with the pea is uh, by Hollywood, right? That brand. So there you have to have mazel. You have to have mazel to find it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's, it's mamish mazel. If you want to maybe go to the chametz aisle and go through all the bottles, maybe you'll find one bottle that is. If you find it, you could use it. Yeah, yeah. If you could find it. It's very, very expensive. It's uh, hard to find. Um, it's, it's a hard to find one item. So peanut oil, your father ate peanut oil. Um, I remember, as a little boy, we bought planter's olive oil, and it said, kosher lepesach on it, yes, with the OK, I think it was the OU. I said, that memory is correct. When we were kids, 100%, um, based on Ramesh's tshuva. Uh, but the absolute accepted minig is not to allow it anymore. 100%. So if you look in the OU guide, it does not say that it's forbidden. 
it just says the accepted minig is not too allowed. You can't say it's forbidden because they, <laughs> when I was a kid, they ate it. They certified it. The minig is, when it comes to kidneys, okay, you, it's, it's, you can't make rules because it's, uh, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So 100% they did eat peanut oil when we were kids. Uh, but uh, nobody gives ashkacha to peanut oil. Uh, we do have actually out of Eretz Yisrael, they are using peanut oil. I mentioned earlier, earlier canola oil. Um, I, I know that because one of the cakes that we were dealing with in the RCC chat over there dealing with its placement has peanut oil in it. So I was laughing. So uh, when I was a kid, they ate it, but the, the minig is not to eat it anymore. That's the accepted minig. So quinoa is a machloikis. Like always, quinoa is a machlekes. Um, so uh, quinoa, in the end, uh, quinoa won. Quinoa won. You know, it uh, won. That's just the way it is. Uh, you know, uh, Raves uh, Shlita was not happy. Uh, he felt that it is a problem. He felt that it is a problem. Uh, but uh, when the OU, the CRC, and the Oak and the Star K all came in favor of allowing it. Right, uh, so I, I presented to Rav Bess, I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, stop <laughs> bringing it in. I, uh, so we had a shayla whether to allow it to be to be sold um, in the ready-made food. That was a question, but I, I think the shayla is mute. I, th- I think at this point we lost the war. Uh, it's a kidney is shayla. We lost the war. So in terms of the P issue, is as follows. So they they want to claim. The star K wants to claim that you need, need to have a P on it um, because it's grown next to, it's grown next to wheat and it's packaged. So uh, for Pesach, I defer to the star K on it. I think that you should. It's going to be hard for you to really know. Um, where we didn't give in to others was during the year. Uh, you didn't hear about it, but on the East Coast, they made a big deal about quinoa being infested. A lot of problems with infestation. So uh, I told, uh, I remember, I says, listen, go to Costco. You're never going to find a bug. There's no bugs in the Costco quinoa. So when you buy these off-brand quinoas at these little supermarkets that have been sitting for six years, and that's why uh, the RCC refused to send out the alert, because I told her this, because he, he discusses me. I say, no, are you kidding? Who's buying quinoa from that? That place is in New York. Nobody's buying that quinoa. Everybody in California is buying the quinoa from Costco. It's much cheaper. right? Uh, so a lot of these things. But I, I think when it comes to Pesach, to discerning which is quinoa, which is wheat, I personally don't see any wheat in the quinoa. I looked at it. I don't see. But uh, everybody said that you have to buy with a pea. I don't like to, that. I'm not going to argue with so you should buy the quinoa with a pea. It's okay. It's all right. No, no, no. Unfortunately, not. And, but I, that one I can't allow because I, I would have to. Buy, I would have to really do a study to see. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, for for ten, eight days, you'll buy the quinoa. If if you use a quinoa again, I, I myself, uh, I, I have to tell you, in deference to Rebes, I personally we don't use quinoa because I feel that because Rebes is one of the biggest pie skin. And uh, I tried to do everything. I, I couldn't stop the city because I, I told them it just can't be. I said, the first, if you remember back a few years ago, we didn't sell it. But when everybody came out in favor of it, I thought, I can't, I can't stop the whole city from selling quinoa. Doesn't, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. People should know. If they know, uh, they can make a decision. They can make a decision. But I, I think that the accepted opinion is, uh, is to allow it. And therefore, that's a, you know, best is a very, <laughs> very uh, understanding uh, place. What, what, what did, oh, the flower. So the almond flower was a personal pet peeve of mine. I absolutely refused to buy a tiny little bag of almond flower at an astronomical price. And I was determined to find out who's making the Kirkland almond flower, right? Because uh, my, wi- my wife uses a tremendous amount of almond flour, right? So... So uh, as I'll tell you what happened. Before, before, before I said kosher for Pesach, I already was using it. 
Because I, you, you have to, I mean, Baruch Hashem, I was able to reach the person who makes it. And uh, so, a hundred percent, bottom line is that the Kirkland flower, yes, Pesach, no Pesach, yes, CRC, um, yes, um, yes, Chavke, uh, I think it is. No, no, who, who's the other one? Chavke? I think it's Chavke now. It's production on the Chavke and production on the KRC. They do both. Uh, one or the other, Loma Shana, doesn't matter. You can use it. So the Kirkland uh, five, I think it's five, two pounds. The blue bag, yeah, the blue bag, the, blue bag uh, the Kirkland flower, you don't have to look at Ashkach. Yeah, no, flower, Pesach, no Pesach. It's just timing. It's just bad muzzle. Now, I, I will explain to you something important. Why don't they put Pesach on it all year? What's the big deal? Put Pesach on it all year. So that was a fight. The reason is that the marketeers feel that if somebody sees on it Pesach, not touching it. After Pesach, Muktze. They're not going to use it. So now they have some of them send Passover and all year round, and they hope that that will skirt the issue. So that works by, the chi- by Empire Chicken, I believe. They use Passover all year round. They switch to that lingo. But chicken is frozen. It doesn't bother you. Something that's shelf that's on the shelf, it bothers you. You're going to think it's from before Pesach. You're not going to want to use it. That's the reason why they have a problem. But it's produced Pesach. That Kirkland flower is Passover 365. It doesn't matter. The other one is the nuts. So finally, uh, now it's public knowledge. But uh, those of us that have been uh, talking about this before, the second pet peeve I had is, I, is nuts. Is that the Costco nuts, it says on the bag, packaged in a facility that also packages wheat uh, and a whole assortment of other problems and other either kidneys or chametz. Okay, so well done. They put that on every single thing that they package, right? It's, it's uh, written by the lawyers. It's written, it's written by the lawyers uh, because they don't want any, uh, they don't care. They put it on. If you look, if you're going to look on uh, some of the chocolates, Barton's, uh, I don't even know if they still sell Barton's, but Barton's Al Shalom, I think. So, Bar- But there's another chocolate that my, my kids just showed me. I don't remember the name. It says on it, uh, packaged on machinery that also packages milk, or something along those lines. So they, it says, it says Pyre on the chocolate. Okay, so in another one, they added lingo. And it has no halachic impact. So I like that. That was very good, very fancy. Nobody has any idea what the word halachic means, but it <laughs> sounds good. Right, the answer is, is that it's, it's all just for legal issues. They're so afraid of being sued, of any of these issues, um, and that's why. This is actually, ha- this interesting legal question that came up, I don't know if you heard about it, but two years ago, two years ago, Somebody went, I don't know why he did this, he tested one of the tea bags from a certain hashkocha that said on it, hashkocha P. Remain nameless. Hashkocha P. He tested it. And it came up that there was gluten, chametz. Chametz in the tea bag, parts per million. Okay, so the Shaila, Shaila was presented, I was on the phone, to, to, um, to Rav Heshel Shech to Shlita. <laughs> so I remember, he, I remember presented the Shaila. It's mamish, 100% chametz in the bag. So he said, I'm the, after you, Shech to Allah doesn't have, I remember he says it, on the phone. Lacha doesn't have parts per million. There's no such thing. Afilo Be'elev, so we asked, Afilo Be'elev? He says, no, there's no such thing as parts per million. You can't have parts per million. It doesn't, uh, I mean, the fact that you could have a scientific experiment to show that there's a parts per million that doesn't have halachic ramification. He says, what's Lacha I don't think anybody heard about it. Uh, did you hear about this teabag, Shayla? No. I, I think, I, I think it, it fell. It was one of those, because the parts per million, he, he said, he said, there's no such thing in halacha. Doesn't, that, we're not going parts per million. Oh, somebody could have a, 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 um, a reaction. He says, we have a shulchan aruch. We answer things based on shulchan aruch, not based upon doctors. 
It's not a doctor's shayla. It's a halachic shayla. He says, he says, he's right off the bat. So they, I guess that's why you never heard of it. Um, they never sent out an alert on that. What if you're, you're buying already sealed processed meat from the kosher processor, but it doesn't say the kosher processor. Oh, yes. Just the meat inside. Yeah, so that's a great question. So I lost out this year. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I lost out big time. I took a gamble, and I ordered. Oh, so, so for, for, let me, I'm sorry. Let, let me explain. All major meat suppliers are packaging meat, raw meat, and raw chicken. I'm not talking about hot dogs. I'm talking about raw meat. Raw meat and raw chicken is packaged 365 Pesach. From the from the manufacturers, so um, um, Empire and Agri, all of the originals. I'm, I'm not talking about RCC supermarkets that repackage it for you. I'm talking when you buy it in the supermarket. Okay, three sixty five. There's only one item that's not pack that's not necessarily so, and that's the ground beef. The ground beef, each manufacturer, is different. The difference is whether or not the same grinder is used to grind um, alternate items with, um, with flour and with uh, bread inside or not. Unfortunately, I took a gamble and I bought two cases of ground beef and uh, I, uh, about a month ago. Uh, for sure it's good. And my bad luck, I, I didn't Google. I mean, I should have researched. I should have Googled it before I did it, but I didn't. And my bad luck, it's the, it's the one or two producers that it's made on Chabot's line. So the ground beef, you have to be careful of. The ground beef must say on a kosher for Passover, or you need to ask. You need to make a million percent sure. But for example, I bought Ali. <coughs> I bought the Ali meal mart, and unfortunately, it's not good. So, okay. It's not Chabot's, I'm not, I'm not, not Chabot's, but you can't use it on Pesach. If it's, uh, it'll be sold in the Chabot's, okay? You gotta sell with the Chabot's. What but, about uh, the ground beef that Costco sells? The teva, it should be. The teva, the one that Costco sells is teva, I believe. The teva doesn't need the pea. The teva is Pesach tik. The ground beef, yeah, 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 yeah. The teva, I can look it up for you, but I'm, I'm 99% sure that, unfortunately, I lost the, <laughs> I, I lost the gamble. Let me look it up here. Teva. I'm pretty sure. And now uh, let's talk about guides. So let me tell you a, a secret. If you go, there are there are several good. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to look it up. But there are, there are several good guides. So the number one guide you should have, if you want a short list, is the CRC makes a shopping list that what doesn't need, um, what doesn't need a kosher certification. So if you go to um, CRC web.org crc web .org, they have an excellent guide um, the OU guide is also very very good um, to have but if you go, want to remember one word um, if you go to kashrut.com kashrut k-a-s-h-r-u-t dot com and you hit their Passover section you're going to get every single guide made in the world Okay, now, that may be TMI for you, but he did an excellent job, or she, actually, did an excellent job at breaking the guides up into mini pieces so that when you click on it, just the piece that you want will come up. You'll see if you go here, and it's one name to remember. But the guides that I recommend, there are three guides that I recommend that are easy. One, number one, is the CRC guide. That's the easiest. The Star K also has very, very, very good lists. Um, and then, of course, and the OU has very, very good lists. So between those three, and it's one site, and you can link them all um, in one place. So that would be one that I recommend, one site that you remember. Okay, the, the Teva is good. Yeah, thank you. The, the Teva is good. The, so, so therefore, the, just I'm sorry, finishing up with the meats, is that a Costco, the Teva meat, it doesn't say P on it. Right, or it may not say P, I think you're right, I think it doesn't. Um, but the, the, even the ground beef is good. 
even the ground beef gif is good, even though it doesn't say on it uh, Pesach. I'm pretty sure it doesn't say on it Pesach, but it is uh, good um, anyway. Um, in terms of RCC places, so if you bought the meat last week, we had not turned over yet. But by this week, almost all of our places, the butcher, at least the butcher part, has been turned over. Um, and uh, therefore, it is uh, fine. Um, if you already cooked with the meat, it's going to be fine also. If you cooked, uh, we had somebody call me with a shayla. Uh, is it jackfruit or beyond or whatever? No. no. That's never going to be good. No. No. Because you, there you have a problem of even if the ingredients are innocuous, you're going to have a hot cook problem on the, on the machinery. You're going to have a machinery problem. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, okay, I think frozen that... Fruits? Oh, so frozen fruits. So frozen fruits, anything that says only fruit in it and no, nothing else, no preservatives and no sugar, it's fine. So the strawberries are fine and the, the, um, the different things. Now... In terms of kashrut, no, so, so I'll tell you like this. So, so let me just, there are two different questions. One is a bug question, and one is a, um, a Pesach question. In terms of bugs, the RCC position here is more strict than others, is that we feel that frozen strawberries are not acceptable. We feel that frozen strawberries are not acceptable. Um, without a hashkacha that says checked for bugs. So we don't agree with other agencies that all frozen strawberries are good. They hold that it is. We don't hold like that. But the difference is we hold that you can make smoothies out of it. Right? You can make smoothies out of it. And that's, that's why you see... So, so therefore... Um, but I, I will tell you, if you have a choice, stay away from the organic. If you, even though you're making it into a smoothie, because uh, the organic strawberries, uh, in my opinion, is muhzik that it has bugs. It's not even a question, does it have bugs? It's a question of how many. Right? When you go to the, when you go to the supermarket and you buy organic strawberries, it's hopeless to wash it. I tried a few times. It's hopeless. You know, I, I, I sometimes we order on Instacart. So I, I don't usually like to buy this, but whatever it is, I, I did. So I, I said specifically, do not buy organic. So, of course, they bring me organic. So I had fun. So I had it already. So I, I looked at it in seconds. In sec, I picked up the strawberry. <laughs> right, you did the strawberry. One bug, two bugs. I picked up another strawberry. One bug, two bugs, three bugs. That whole thing was full of strawberries. Because that's just, just the way it is. When the organic strawberries is worse than any other item. Because the, the fruit is on the outside. It's sweet. So the bugs, it's teeming with bugs. And they're not fighting it. They're not even trying to fight it. And therefore it's hopeless. So therefore the, I would not buy an organic frozen strawberry. But a regular strawberry... And you blend it is fine. So if there's no other ingredients, it's perfectly fine even for Pesach. But you have to blend it, in my opinion. The OU may hold differently, but that's my, my opinion in terms of it. Like mango or something like that. The mango is fine. If there's nothing in there but mangoes, that's also fine. Um, just be careful that when you're buying stuff in the supermarket that you're not buying kidneys. Now, kidneys is, includes string beans and includes snap peas and includes... Sugar snap, right? So, ain't not the bayu elam ki nisko v'mitzchila, right? You can, uh, I, I, I myself, <laughs> I was in the supermarket, and I was so focused on the different things, I bought the snap peas, one of these peas, one of the things, right? I wasn't, I was uh, busy <laughs> with other things, right? And I, I knew that the wash was good, but I didn't. This is years ago, not, not now when I'm doing what I do, but uh, maybe years ago I bought it. And somebody came over and said, Rabbi, I thought you said that it's not good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it uh, happens, you know, you're right. I says, you know, you're 100% right, it's not good. <laughs> okay, it happens. 
I remember you want. I also want to tell you about seltzer. This is important to know for two reasons. So you have the same thing by seltzer. One book is going to tell you unflavored seltzer is fine, and the other book is going to say must have hashkacha. What in the world could be in the seltzer? What's can sign with seltzer? It's water. Water and bubbles. Right? As the answer is that how do you make bubbles? How do you make CO2? So one agency holds that because some CO2 is captured from, I think it's beer, I think so, if I remember correctly, it's beer. So they recapture the CO2. So is CO2 captured from beer, comets? Okay, so this is out of my league. Again, I'm not a place, okay? I'm just a uh, just person who isn't cautious. So that's a machlaikis. It's a machlaikis between agencies, and that's why that reflects itself, why one book is going to it. I, I think the accepted opinion is you can be lenient. The accepted opinion is unflavored seltzer is fine. You just have to make sure it's unflavored. But unflavored seltzer, now, unflavored seltzer, it doesn't need ashkacha. Unflavored seltzer doesn't need ashkacha. It just needs to be unflavored seltzer now. Don't confuse seltzer with club soda. Okay, that's another mistake that I made when I was younger. Okay, seltzer is without salt. Club soda is with salt. Salt is a problem on Pesach because the standard salt in the United States is iodized, right? Oh, you have to be choshish, it's iodized. So you, have to be, you have to suspect that it's iodized. Uh, and therefore, you have to make sure you're buying seltzer and not club soda. Right, so seltzer, plain seltzer, unflavored seltzer. You could use any, um, you could use any um, that you have. Um, be careful, the um, Pellegrino. What, what's the other one? Perrier. 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 So just be careful. You're buying the right one. Um, we had a lot of people confuse. Perrier comes in three varieties. It comes at least, or at least two varieties. The plain and the lemon. I make others also, but the plain and the lemon. The lemon is not good for Pesach. It's only the plain that's good for Pesach. Right? Now, why they can't make the lemon one good for Pesach, I don't know. But uh, that's the reality. So uh, you want to make sure you're buying the right Perrier. Did you say the prices are typically a drop you So cumin is a machlaikis, um, whether or not, there are two machlaikis, and one is whether or not it's possibly, whether or not it's kidney out inherently. And the second is some hold that it's often made with kidney out added in. And that seems to have been a tenacious issue. I think if you find one that has an OUP, you could be lenient. I don't think you have to be so machmer, double machmer. To, uh, I think it's a... <laughs> It's enough, it's not chametz. Uh, so therefore, but that's the reason why you see the machloket. There is machloket whether some of these things are kidney oat. I will tell you something fascinating. Which seed, which is called a seed, is mutter, is permitted according to everybody to eat on Pesach? So watermelon. Watermelon seed. I don't know why. Uh, there's no logic in this thing. It's just, just luck. It's just luck. Because some things you see, the fruit is mutter. So you have some things with the outside peel, uh, the the pumpkin, I think. It, it, we do differentiate. I think so. The pumpkin seed is not allowed? I, I think so. I think so. I don't remember exactly. But uh, I think the watermelon seed, they do uh, they do allow. I, I don't know how many watermelons. In our show, they make watermelon seed. I never see watermelon seed in America. But I, it just the, the, the kidneyest things is, is, is a little bit of a problem. It's, it's not an exact science. It's not. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little just luck. Consens- it's consensus and muzzle. That's what it is. You can't, can't, you can't say a hard and fast 100 million percent rule. Muzzle. Canola oil, uh, in theory, should be permitted. But unfortunately, it lost. It's a muzzle. It didn't have muzzle. So we lost out. Kinwa, and then Mazel, and then Mazel, so it went out. Okay, I think that I took enough of, yeah. Uh, going back to the spices, did I hear correctly that you said, for example, big places like Costco, turmeric, or 
To Merrick, I would he certainly needs hashkacha. To Merrick, certainly needs hashkacha. I was only saying that the black pepper at Costco, the ground black pepper at Costco, I think is okay, um, because something of that size is too big to have that level of cross contamination. Um, but any sensitive types to Merrick, all these other ones, black pepper is a very innocuous item. It's also a very strong item. But all of the other ones, really, you want to make sure that it has ashkacha. I will tell you, though, is look for, um, to make it economically possible to afford Pesach, you want to look for its delish. Because he doesn't mark up the spices. So he's a from guy, a nice guy. Rabbi Gravitsky, um, I'm sorry, Rabbi Gravitsky. He's a tzaddik of a mensch. Uh, we actually helped him once. Just to tell you how powerful the lobby is of McCormick Spice, they do not allow. You ever notice why is it's delish in the kosher aisle? Okay, why is it the kosher? Aisle? It's, like it's kosher. No, that's not the reason. They will not allow Ralphs to stock it's delish in the spice aisle. Because you ever look on the, in the spice aisle? Everything comes in that big size. If it's a big one, it's this big. Yeah. Right? right. You have to mortgage your house for the large size. And he sells it this big for this price. So they don't want it. It's going to crush their sales. It's going to crush their sales. And therefore, he's not allowed in the spice aisle. They get away with it because it's a specialty um, item in the kosher aisle. He gets a better spot on the end. Okay, that could be. But, but that's the history. That's the history behind... Uh, uh, some interesting things of how the supermarket works. But I, I would say for Pesach, you're better off going with It's Delish. It's a cheap price. It makes it easy. Also, it, it's, it, you don't have to worry. You just don't have to deal with the problems. That oh, you, Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you did this. Uh, it's easier. It's easier. And if, if, if the price wouldn't be so cheap, I would have worked much more on it, like I did on the, the nut flour and the Costco nuts. Uh, it's Delish. For two, three bucks, you can get a big container. For three dollars, it's okay. You can just get one with Pesach on it. You shouldn't drink. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so the Triangle K uh, lost that account. It went to the OK last year. So the Sun Made Raisins last year switched after 50 years or seven, after 50 years being under the Triangle K, uh, they switched to the OK. Um, so right now you're going to find it with the OKP. I don't, I don't think there are any boxes left. If you still have a box of Triangle KP, you could use it. I mean, if you find it in the store, it's just an old, um, it's just an old box. It, it switched to the OK finally. Um, uh, in general, the problem with raisins would be the oil. It's not the raisins. Um, one thing, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you is the date problem. I, I was hoping I, I don't have an answer for you. Which dates are good and which dates are not? Every year it's a problem because of the dryer and the sprayer and, and the thing. It seems to me the medjol dates, the medjol mujol medjol dates, are good because it doesn't seem that they do much to them. They just box them. So it seems to me, from what I was able to so far find out, those are going to be good. But all of the other dates, I don't have clarity to tell you which ones yeah and which ones no. Unfortunately. So that you have to know. You have to know. If it's in the RCC store, so the smaller dates is, being, is coming from a set in farms with a Passover certification. That's, so we're not really dealing with it. The medjo, uh, the big ones that are coming out of other countries are also good. The question ones, the ones that you're getting in Costco, I, I don't know the answer to yet. I'm trying to find out the answer, but I don't know. So that, that one, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for. So you have two problems by parboiled rice. One is if a guy can a guy cook it, and the second problem is the machinery. Is the machinery kosher or treif? So the reality. So in terms of bishalakum, 
a guy cooking it, you don't have a problem because it's not, they stop the process early enough that it does not create a bishal issue. They stop it, they retard it early enough that it's not a problem. But you're correct, if a non-Jew, I, I just had a pro- somebody made a mistake. This is why you always need people to look over your shoulder. I, uh, we help different people in different agencies. You have to have someone else, no matter how good you are, you have to have someone else that walks into a place. Someone was doing a favor for the community, not, not, not here. He forgot the rice. He made a whole place kosher. He did a whole thing. He missed the rice. People don't realize because the rice is in a rice cooker. He didn't chop. He didn't think of it. You make mistakes. That's why you need other people. All of us make mistakes, myself included. That's why we always rotate people. You don't have the same person going in all the time. You need other people. You need, you need other people to tell you that you're wrong. So rice is a big problem. Anybody, unfortunately, there's a, there's a cashless agency. I really should say the name. I'm not going to. I reviewed a place. They brought me in to review a place here in California. The owners brought me in to review the place for whatever reason. Okay? I get there. The guy you are cooking. So I ask him, how the guy I'm cooking? How does it work? So I assumed, I really meant, that they must be turning it on electronically. It didn't enter my... I assumed I was trying. I didn't mean how are they doing it. I meant how are they doing it? That's what I, I really said. How, how are they doing it? It's, it's unbelievable. So he says to me, and the owner tells me, the owner is religious, whatever, is Jewish. He says, that kosher agency, they don't... <laughs> what do you say? They don't, uh, they don't go for Bishalakum. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? They don't do that. They don't do that. <laughs> there is such a thing in my life. Right, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's out of New York, Kashkach Agency. Right, he tells me, they, they don't do that. And, okay, I found other things too, other trade things too at the place. I was very disappointed. I'd never seen that before. I, I heard people make mistakes. I never heard somebody, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. I can't make it do. So, but the parboiled is because they retarded before. The, um, they retarded before. The question of the equipment so that's a question. That, that's a question. But uh, the OU has parboiled rice. That's why they, uh, you want to make sure that they don't do other things on the line. But that, that's the header for the parboiled rice of the OU. Um, you just have to make sure that the Jew finishes the process afterwards. That's uh, an issue. So if it doesn't have a good header, parboiled? So I, I believe, to be honest with you, I would tell you not to use it. I believe, honestly, that... The all parboiled rice is going to be made on a dedicated rice line. It, it's too early in the process for it to be adulterated. A parboiler is a special type of machine. It's not. They're not taking a pot and putting it on for four minutes and taking it off. So I, I think all of it is permitted, but I, I don't want to answer you like that. I would have to look into it. But I, I, I my guess is, in my memory, but the, the, you buy the OU, the Star K one. It's very hard to find. You know, we're blessed to live in America, right? We have hashkachas. I was in, I had to go to Syracuse, New York, over December 25th. I landed December 24th, right? I remembered as a little boy, my father, my rest in peace, he was from Syracuse. I remember once going there. I, I, I thought it's 30, 50, 40 years later. I landed, I had in my, my suitcase a can of tuna and crackers, and I think that was it. And I figured when I land, I'll buy something to eat. Whatever I'll buy, I'll buy something to eat for myself. Yeah, I land. I had never been in a place at December, at 6 o'clock on December 24th. Every single place shut down. Okay? I had nothing to eat from, <laughs> December, from night. I had enough for that night. I, and I had, I'm sorry, I had peanut butter, a little peanut butter with the crackers. Um, till from 6 o'clock on, on Erev, December 24th, till 6 a.m., not December 25th, 
December 26th. So there's still, uh, there's still religion in America. They were closed. Closed. So I only found one store open. An Indian store. An Indian store. I go into the Indian store. There's got to be something. There's got to be something I can eat in an Indian store. There's got to be something I can buy. Right? I found two items. I, I was mamish fascinated. Absolutely intrigued. I, I love kashas. I love food. So I, uh, I found two things with a kosher symbol. That was it. Two things. Dole pineapple juice and milk and, and uh, yogurt, not chalav Yisrael. That was the only two things. The store was a big store. Zero. I could not read any words on any item. But hala, it said halal on it because in India there are, hot, there are uh, Muslims. Okay, zero. I couldn't even make out what it was. Right. So I lost weight. I lost weight. That shift. That's all I had. It was mama's peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter and they couldn't find anything. Right. So, so I gave up. I just went to bed. Dried, dried fruits. Dried fruits should have ashkach. It's too confusing. It, it's too confusing to know. For Pesach, it's too confusing to know. Because you have a flour problem. You have a dryer problem. You have different ingredients problems. You have too, too many different issues that could be wrong. It's easier to buy with Ashkoch for the one week because if you make a mistake, you're gonna you could be up the creek. <laughs> you could be up the creek. So I would say you better. Off. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful Chakash of a If you have any questions, please call Rabbi Horowitz.